Hi, hello, hey, and welcome to episode 30 plus one to Rush Vibes. I am one of your hosts, Jessica Rush Vibes Rushing, accompanied by your other host, David Rush Vibes Rushing, and we are here to rush the vibe with you and give you the details of our opinions. That's all I got. What are details? Details is the new word that I came up with. Because you know how people are like, oh, girl, give me that tea. But then you also want the details. Like the tea is essentially the details. So I was like, why not just swap out the D and put T? Swap out the what? The D. <laughs> Stop it. Um, and put explicit, tea. explicit vibes, adult and, vibes. And now it's gonna, it's tea tail. So um, another one of the shirts that's gonna be coming down the line. It's either gonna say, "Give me the tea tails" or "Spill the tea tails," and maybe have like. You can't be putting all this stuff out before we have a chance. And maybe to have like, like a little trademark, teacup, trademark. All have these. like a teacup on a saucer that's spilt, and says like. Give me the details. The details. But uh, I'm trademarking that. I own the rights to that design. So don't do it. I'll come for you. And it's, Somebody's it's, going to do it. It's on audio and video. So I feel like I have a case. The audio and video. Anyway, here we are. Team Rushed Vibes. Back. Repping. Oh, we're repping Charlotte hard. Yes, we are. Because Charlotte is where Rush Vibes Studios is located. And we go hard for our city. Go hard for our city. Hard, hard for our put city. Put on. Put on. I saw that shoulder pop. Put, put, it back, put it back down. I'm sorry. Yeah, don't, don't get, don't, don't start. It's too My early. Bad. My bad. So it is our post Juneteenth and Father's Day vibe. So Juneteenth was, was good. It was hot. It was very hot. Um, Like hot. Steamy. I had a friend it's on the humidity. Uh, IG. She had gone to the Durag Festival. and I mean, her Durag looked like it was bedazzled in Swarovski crystals. It was like glistening. It was beautiful. Um, but she, like an hour later, <laughs> she made a follow-up post. And she was like, y'all, that joint wasn't for what the, me. What the matches look like? It was, it was, she was like, it's, it's too hot. <laughs> it was too hot. She couldn't do it. And it, it, it was hot. Like, it's. It's hot. Like, I feel like I know people don't like to do things in the winter time, but I'm very much so I'd rather do things late fall, late winter, where it's that those transitional seasons. Yeah, because I I just I can't handle the heat. And then I'm I'm a small bladder person. So the amount of water I need to consume to stay hydrated. I don't know why we're talking about bladder sizes. Because it makes it we are truly. I'm giving Truly you the, I'm you giving guys. you the details. Um, the amount of water I have to drink to balance out the the concentration of humidity and heat is too much, and then I have to find a bathroom. Your elbows are coming through on the mic. Oh, they're they? rolling across the table. Oh, yeah, sounds bad. like you're farting. I'm not farting. Um, so that's high. why. <laughs> that's why I don't like I don't like doing stuff in the summer. But summer is when you can do all the things outdoors. And I'm like, ugh. y'all, y'all didn't learn from the pandemic. We can do stuff in tents in the wintertime. Sounds like champagne problems. It me. is champagne problems, but. We, you've lived in North Carolina, North Carolina long enough to know that this time of year is when it gets sticky. It's, it's global warming, y'all. If you don't believe it, like it's hot. I mean, global warming is a thing. It for is sure, hotter this summer than it was last summer. And last summer was a pandemic and we were inside. But it so is how do you, if you're inside, how do you know it's hotter than it was last summer? the few times I would open the door for Amazon packages. The few times? The few times. Uh, the ones that I couldn't. Dude was here every the week. The ones I couldn't afford you to see that I bought, um, that I got for myself. It was hot. Like It's hot, y'all. It's a different kind of heat. I don't know how you guys can sit back and be like, no, global warming does not exist. It exists. It's hot. It's like, it's hot in California. Like, and they have humidity and they don't know what to do with themselves. So I'm just saying. Mm. So there was that um, Did not end up doing the Juneteenth cookout That I was like debating between Ended up doing the Father's Day brunch um, Which was which was nice I, I, I made a post on Facebook I said I, I literally spent all week saying Jess don't do the most Don't do the most 
don't do the most because I'm notorious for doing the most and burning myself out. So don't do the most, don't do the most, don't do the most. I still, I, I did on a scale of like one to 10, 10 being most, I probably did like a 7.65. Uh, we did French toast and fried chicken. Fried. And because I didn't want to do fried. waffles. I feel like chicken and waffles is so is, is become so mainstream. So I was like, let's fried. switch it up. Stop it. Sorry. Um, and then I did a ribeye, two ribeyes, two thick ribeyes. Um, and some, just like some thick boys, some potatoes and peppers and green beans and onions um just to kind of balance it because i feel like brunch needs to have the sweet and the savory but then i knew we would kind of linger through the day so i wanted to have options but i still ended up making a quick mac and cheese for sure. for the kids um which they devoured i was like y'all this was supposed to be for the baby and everybody else was like was in it so that was father's day david got like Christmas slash birthday amounts of gifts. Like it was, fan- it was fantastic. It was to the point where I was sitting there. I was like, "Wait, something's missing." So I had to go back to my office and get another box that I had forgotten. Yeah, but. just had the gifts coming, coming to the house like a month. Oh, uh, you know, up yeah, to like I- a month before yesterday, Father's Day, and she told me that the packages were for me. So I was like, "Oh, so you're gonna let me open one, right?" And nah. at the first, at first, she was like, eh, "I may let you open one early." But then I think I said something that yeah. upset her. So she was like, no, nope. you're just going to wait till Sunday or Father's Day. So I waited a month, which is hard for me. It is. Normally I can talk her down. I'm, I'm like, come on, babe. You know I love you. You know I love you, What's girl. What's to do with it? Come here, girl. It's love's got nothing to do. Nothing to do with but it. She, and, she held firm. And just being able to torture him was really nice because he, he can't keep a secret. Like he'll get me something or think about getting me something. And he'll be like, oh, Jess. I can't wait till you see what I got you. Oh, Jess. I can't wait. Jess. Jess. And then he ends up telling me. He was like, do you want me to tell you? And I'm like, no, but if you want to tell me, tell me. Yeah. He can't. He, so it's I actually end up talking him out of getting me gifts all the time because he's like, okay, so I'm going to tell you what I'm going to get you. And if he hasn't gotten it for me and I think it's absurd, I'm like, no, don't get it. And he's like, okay, are you sure? But I really want to get it. And I'm like, no, you can't. I can't let you spend that money on me. So I think I told him last year, I was like, just buy it for me. Because if you already bought it for me and, and the intent has already been completed, I can't make you return it. But if you tell yeah. me before you've swiped the card, I'm not, I'm not going to let you do it. So, All right. But yeah, I, I actually was really, I don't know why I was so motivated and this you Father's Day. Your elbows on Can the table. you just... It's not going to get through. Yes, it is. It, people are only going to notice it because you keep talking no, about it. No, they're going to notice it because they hear you. Oh, my gosh. It's not that serious. It is that serious. <sighs> I'm returning all of the gifts, and I'm buying myself no, a spa not. day. No, you Actually, not. I'm keeping one gift, <laughs> which is the massage gun. Massage oh, I have to gun. keep the other gift because it's it's got your initials on. It's got your yeah. name on it. Yeah. Yeah. Darn it. Don't get things customized because yeah. then you can't return it. Yeah, I got spoiled. It was, a great, it was a great Father's I don't know Day. what motivated me. I was my just brother like, was here with his family. And my mom and dad were here. So we had most of of the family here in the house. And, you know, we ate. We, we laughed. We talked over a little bit. And then uh, my brother and I went to watch some of the uh, the playoffs, enjoying some some of the finest bourbon and, and cigars. So it was, it was a good time. I'm a cheap date. You don't he need really to do. Is. You don't need to do a whole lot. To he's like a chicken tender date. Yeah, actually, no. He's upgraded to wings. Wings, yeah. No matter where you take bone them. in, bone in, because boneless is just chicken nuggets. So, but they're, uh, they're tossed in sauce. No, nah, it's just chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets are you ground. put like you put lipstick on a pig. It's still a pig. Anyway, but yeah, it was nuggets. it was a good it was a good Father's Day. It was just a nice family gathering. It was nice having everyone around. Yeah. Um, besides Savi, who was just on some other stuff like well she had been gone all week she had so she came home sunday and was like i'm ready to reclaim her territory f out like she would make me pick her up my house y'all and then make me put her down and then slide down and like throw a fit but she was perfectly fine um but it was nice like we you know nephew the kids were upstairs didn't make as big of a mess as i thought but i haven't fully inspected i'm really making a mess Um, at all i don't think there wasn't really any crying I mean, occasional no. like fuss, but not like like meltdown. This person's not sharing with me. Um, Dad was chilling. I think he he slipped his nap in, um, and then Savi like kind of came over and glanced yeah, at him not, a little you're bit. You're not gonna nap around, Savi. <laughs> um, and then you know us it's ladies, Mom, Sarah, and I, we were just kind of sitting at the table and just having conversations. So it was it was a night. It was nice 
to gather and of course it was a holiday but it was still nice to to have everybody together and yeah. it's been a while since we've hosted you sure. know, the whole clan so yeah. it was it's good a good weekend it was a good a good good weekend yeah so uh we're here because you know there's a new episode of rush fives we got some stuff to talk about we i do. think this is a good point to take our first break we'll come back and then we'll get into the nitty-gritty so stay tuned my skin looks good. Vibe try. Oh, we're Back recording. Back in the house. Yes, Jessica, your skin looks Yours actually looks good, too. I know. What are, you, are you using my stuff? It's 100% out of the box, baby. Out of what box? The box. You know, like when you buy something and you just it just works straight out of the box. It's just my skin. I don't put anything on. Just naturally uh, no, that's the melanated. Line. Yeah, I know that, but... Like. <laughs> Why is your skin so clear? I don't know. Well, I think it's just because my hair hair is pulled back now, so you can actually see more. My face is more prominent. Yeah, you got some oily spots. You might want to work on. Or, yeah, I think it's just the the that light. T-zone. No, um, <clears throat> excuse us. Sorry, <laughs> we. Uh, I didn't realize we were recording. When yeah, I we're, was, we're, we're recording. I was looking at myself. So, um, we talked about how Juneteenth was this weekend. Mm-hmm. You can get your elbow on my shot, please. Appreciate you. Uh, and um, last last episode, we talked about how Mecklenburg County um, had approved basically reparations for. Uh, for I think the, you should have county. angled your shot better. I probably mm-hmm. should have, or maybe you should just scoot over. Yeah, get away from me. Bye. So I noticed, obviously, your response was rather lukewarm. Some news that also came out last week was uh, Biden signed or president signed uh, a bill making Juneteenth a federal holiday. Ooh. And I noticed that was also met with a very lukewarm reaction, both here and Rush Vibe Studios, though not from me, it's from her and around the the internets, the, the internets, the, the interwebs. Not, and not the old vice president's internet, the new age internet. <laughs> not, not, yeah. The melanated internet. <laughs> So, I have a question. I might have an answer. And my question to you, as um, a representative of uh, Team Lukewarm, oh, is baby. why is it that when things happen that we have been asking for, that we would, uh, we, we would appreciate as a black culture, why is it when things happen, it always seems like for instance, Juneteenth, it's not enough. Um, before I get into this, because I'm going to say some non-politically correct things. Oh, Lord. Um, I the want to, thoughts and opinions expressed by I Jessica are not, are not indicative. I don't need you to of, indict me. Indicative, of the overall indic- views <laughs> here. Indicate me, whatever. Indic- 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 <laughs> of Rush Vibes. Um, I, will say, I want to say one thing. Oh, and you I'm know actually, what we didn't do? Uh, what are you drinking real quick before you? Um, something I got from Trader Joe's. I can't remember. It's Italian. Italiano. Oh, I got bourbon. You know, you, um, know, you know what we do. I should, I should get something from South Africa. But So anyway, whenever I say things about. It's colonizers um, out there. There are. It's colonized. Colonized one. Black South Africa. Um, whenever I say things about. Actually, I don't even want to defend it in that sense. Essentially, what I want to make sure I say, because a lot of the, um, okay, white, so, a lot of the white people that no, I no, no, affiliate no. with, real quick, real quick, what? my question was unfair. I don't want you to speak for everybody. I want you to speak for yourself. I will. Okay. Um, it's just this is something I've been wanting to say on the podcast because oh. um, I think I told you that Georgia and I had once had a conversation. Georgia. Um, that's our Esquire, our in-house Georgia. council, because um, we have that. We're at that level. Um, uh, I, didn't, I didn't start that. And we were know. talking about I guess how. We're a couple minutes in. What are you talking about? I didn't start the timer for the camera, so I don't know where we're at. Anyway, um, we were talking about how, and we even mentioned it, that white people, because I don't want, I don't really care what people think I my my opinions on um, white people are. I have white people in my life that I love. Um, but I've noticed, you know, that the white people who tend to get offended by statements about white people are usually the ones who are questionable. Um, and that white people who our genuine allies understand that white people suck. Um, Jessica. <laughs> that some white people suck. 
Thank you. That's some white people. Goodness so. gracious. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there. So I'm, to, I'm speaking. I'm that one out. I'm speaking uh, from the perspective of the ally, allied white people, like those who get it. So you're speaking on behalf of. I'm not speaking on behalf. Like when I'm saying all of like the things, uh, I'm all of the things. You sound like the Bora. Oh, uh, I'm of the including. Things. I'm including allied white people because ally. I've the allied white people I've talked to. They're like, yeah, white people don't get it. Like so, I've noticed that true. Like true down for the cause white people understand is it true down for the cause white people or just people who happen to be white that agree with you not even that they agree with me but they understand that like through history and the things that happen Mm -hmm. they're not offended by the generalization because they're like and even now that i think about it growing up like i knew some kids they'd be like yo white people we we're, we're some kind of messed up so um i just wanted to put that out there my issue with juneteenth um, and with all the other things that get approved, um, especially at a rapid pace, is to my knowledge, I don't know that anyone asked for Juneteenth to become a holiday. Um, I don't, I don't recall that being the thing. That wasn't the thing that was trending. There were, there's a meme that's going around, um, and it shows this one, this kid, he's climbing the stairs and it shows all the different things that were skipped over to mm-hmm. get to Juneteenth. And that's where I am. I think I'm really at the point. And there is a quote from the late and great Malcolm X. And we're going to Malcolm. yeah, okay. we're going all the way to Malcolm. So this is, Malcolm. this is decades, decades, sweet brother Malcolm. Um, he said that, I can't remember if he said that, like the government or white people will give you something to make like instead of what you actually want. And I'm completely paraphrasing. I'll look it up um, when David starts speaking. Um, But they'll give you what you want to think that you got, like you accomplished something and you didn't. So there were so many reforms we asked for. I mean, um, Asian of the Asian hate bill has passed and that issue came up after all of the issues um you know we had issues with police reform um that we wanted addressed i mean voter suppression um issues you know the resurrection per se of jim crow so it's like it's nice thank you for giving us juneteenth that we didn't ask for uh, it's like when you're sitting down and your kid brings you something that they like a glass from another table that wasn't bothering them. And they're like, here you go. And you can see it like it's about to break. And it. it's like, I didn't ask you for this. That's kind of how I feel about Juneteenth. Like we we didn't we didn't ask you for this. The things we actually asked you for, we haven't gotten like, yay, another day off. I mean, when if black people want a day off, they gonna take a day off. So like we didn't need another day off um and now juneteenth is becoming commercialized so by next year these big corporations are in turn going to start making money off of it like i told i talked about how my client has a pride cake like what next year we gonna have a juneteenth cake like it's just gonna be just so it's like you don't think it, um, i feel like you don't it, think, i feel like it benefits you don't think pride month has been commercialized Pride Month is, oh my gosh, yes it is. You don't think Black Lives Matter was commercialized? It was commercialized, but, and, and that's the problem. These things that was are- it a pro- Was it a problem when every, when, when last summer, when everybody was supporting Black Lives, Black Lives Matter? No, because it got, like, it got businesses going, but at the root of it, it didn't actually benefit like overall. So yeah, we had, you know, the initiatives to support black business, which is amazing. Um, and it's, it's kind of bled into support. Like, you know, I think I saw pushes for supporting Hispanic. Uh, there was a month that, um, uh, Yelp was really big about pushing people to support, you know, Hispanic businesses and Asian American businesses, female owned businesses. So essentially all the marginalized groups, um, which I, I support and I am here for, but the thing with Juneteenth is, it's not what we asked for. It's 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 a band aid gift. There's the wound is still deep. Um, the effects are still deep. And yes, it's a celebratory occasion uh, because there were people who were enslaved two years past the Emancipation Proclamation, uh, and they were not made aware of their freedoms. Uh, and can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, just a guess because there's no there's no way we could actually verify um, the percentage. But if you had to guess, um, 
outside of like the last couple of years, Mm -hmm. would you say that out of all the white uh, citizens of this country, would you say that under 50% or over 50% knew what Juneteenth even is or stands oh, for? Oh, it was well under 50%. Okay. And you know um, what's no, no, funny? I'm not done. I have, I have, no, I have, I have a follow-up. I have, I, but no, I, I have an inter, I have an asterisk. No, but I have a, but I'm, but this, is asterisk, part of, this is still part of asterisk. my question. Put a pin in that? Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Um, now, wasn't... Um, you said you were you were tired uh, last week, exhausted of having to educate white people about black history, right? Mm-hmm. So what better way for uh, white people who would be, you know, in the dark or ignorant of uh, certain um, events in black history to become aware of those and be able to research those than for something being uh, considered a national holiday or something being talked about in the headlines regularly and celebrated so, that they, so that they can get that, uh, they can have that context, they can get that understanding, and then that could just serve as a rabbit hole or a gateway gateway information into, uh, into learning more about hidden or covered up Because you have 15 states that also passed bills, I believe Texas, Texas, of course, on June 14th, if I'm not mistaken, it's either the 14th or the 15th, passed a bill saying that you cannot discuss things regarding um, race, like it, race issues, um, racial matters in history, like all teachers, specifically social studies teachers. Um, I think also things regarding like uh, gender marginalization. What does that have to do with Juneteenth? Because now you've given us this holiday, whoop de doo but we can't talk about it. Like, we can't educate our kids about it. We can, but this is something teachers can't discuss. So now you're muzzling the next generation, and they're still going to grow up ignorant of the, the facts. So I actually, it's funny, I went to go, I went to pick up the girls from my parents, and my I guess my mom was going through, you know, some old boxes and stumbled upon old college book I mean high school books so it was like all of my ACT SAT prep books and then I happened to find is that why those books were in the yeah I happened to find my high school yearbook and I was like who's in school I I was like wait a minute Salas is is I I love history so I love learning Sovereign is (laughs) not even two yet like who is starting them young um but I knew it wasn't for me because I'm done he's done I'm done done uh so I found my high school yearbook and then my AP senior year um, American history book. Sure. So I went into. I have a feeling I know where this is going. I went into the index. Yeah. Un, un, uninspired. Something just said, you know, go go look in the index. The book is thicker than the Bible. It's like this thick by this long. It's a massive book. I'm like, my poor shoulders was lugging. Were, that was I was lugging that book back yeah. and forth. So I went into the index, the very back of the book. Mm-hmm. I went to J. Mm-hmm. I went to JU. Mm-hmm. I went to J-U. There was no J-U-N. Juneteenth mm-hmm. was not in my AP it's a federal holiday American now. History book. It's probably going to be in those books pretty soon. And granted, that book is from 20. 10, 11, 12 years ago. Um, but Juneteenth happened 156 years ago. I mean, I, I, so, let's not, I mean I'm not trying to sit here and act like I don't, I don't know that like things have been uh, purposefully like redacted like, like redacted and and dismissed and, and ignored from from black history i understand that so i i get the point you're making that juneteenth wasn't in those but i didn't know about juneteenth growing up i never learned I about either. it and from from and school north carolina is a lot closer to texas well, than massachusetts was. yeah yeah but most of my my public school education was came from virginia northern virginia oh that's even public worse. school system prince, prince william like. county shout out nova um but yeah i, I didn't learn about juneteenth i was a full-grown adult mm-hmm. and that's what I'm saying. Like it's a, it's a federal holiday now, so I mean that that helps, and it, and 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 it's and it's recognition, right? I mean, and it's 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 signifying how important that date is, and people are going to feel how they feel about it, right? I mean, people are either going to appreciate it, people are going to be like, mm, cool, and or people are going to be like, oh, why can't we celebrate? <laughs> I only celebrate Independence Day. That's what I'm only. so it's like, but y'all get people are going to feel, it, but it's but it's out there, right? Like mm-hmm. now it's a federal holiday. Like people, you can't not. Acknowledge it. You can't so, not. So like, I think there's a disadvantage. That it's, that it's so there. I remember. So, I'm sorry. I remember my no, brother. Not. I'm not sorry. No, you're not sorry. Because I'm giving you a taste of your own interruption medicine. So I think my brother was maybe 
12 and he's probably not the best example uh he was like 12 or 13 and he we were in a conversation and he was like well i don't know why we're off for martin luther king day and and that conversation eventually led to he didn't really even understand like what martin luther king did i gasped i was like oh, um pearls, good God. pearls being uh, again my brother's probably not the best example because studious wise he that's, that's so just what not we're him. not going to do again um, this is like the third episode in a row jessica has tried to attack a family member we are not what we will not do when i will not this allow this is a family member from my side i will not it doesn't matter <laughs> i will not allow you to trash my little brother-in-law you will not do it anyway based off of the conversation the, dis, the disrespect uh, he was not fully aware of the significance of Martin Luther King. And I was taken aback. And my brother and I are eight years apart. Take so, you know, I, like I and I'm a his, I, I've expressed this a lot. I'm a history buff. I love, you know, watching documentaries. I love learning about history, not even just American history, but like especially you know, just world history. Just got to be watching that stuff with the subtitles. <laughs> I do. With like the old. I come through here. I watch her like two minutes. I'll tap out. I don't have the I can't. With can't some philosopher it. named Siegfried. Like yeah. just. Yeah, that's I'm me. That, I'm not that guy. I enjoy that stuff. Um, she's my she's my world history. And proxy. I'll be dropping like random random knowledge, and he's just we'll like, be yeah we'll be driving somewhere, and I'll just be like, oh, I wonder where that like why that structure is the way it is, and just be like, well, in 1692, <laughs> the architectural <laughs> style, uh, the Baroque I'm like, period. What? Like, what? How do you even know? How do you even know stuff like I this? I just like, like I like random knowledge. So you know, it was in that was probably the first moment that I realized the educational system was failing student and again and that's why i preface that you know my brother's not the most studious at the time he was you know he was just a young kid i don't know how much he was actually paying attention and doing his homework but i felt like when i was growing up we knew about martin luther king we did projects we did sure. books and all of that sure. and i don't know that they do the same so the point i'm trying to make is we're at a disadvantage because juneteenth takes place in june school is out by this time uh so you don't have the backing of well now teachers are restricted so, but you don't have the backing of like oh we are celebrating this hall this holiday and we're in school. Let's make, you know, flags. Let's, you know, everybody write a paper. Let's put together poems. Um, so I feel like that's at a disadvantage. And just the restrictions that they're putting on teachers in terms of educating students on race relations, that is very destructive I, to. I need to interrupt because we, I think we, I think we agree mm -hmm. on the, the overall issue here, but one of the sub issues I think we, we disagree on is that it is not 100% responsibility of the school system to no. teach your child. So let's not act like, Oh damn, you can't teach you. Could, your school is out in June. I guess we can't ever like our kids will never learn about Juneteenth. You got a two parent household here. True. We've got two kids. We are more than capable of pulling up a YouTube video, heading over to the library, checking out some books, buying some books, or doing art projects at home with our kids. Mm -hmm. So parents have the ability, yes, you and you, to teach children, your own children. It isn't, you, you don't, like if, if you want to roll the dice and only allow the school system to be the only source of education for your kids, you know, have at it. I mean, I mean, it'll, you know, either they'll turn out great, they'll turn out good, or they, you know, they won't. <laughs> but like, I, I understand, like, yes, it would be in a perfect world. This, we would, this wouldn't be something we would have to fight for, right? We wouldn't have to, to fight bills in states from being, being passed that um, prevent teachers from being able to teach all history, um, especially when it comes to black history. Like, yes, that would be perfect. And those, those fights need to be fought. I 100% I agree. Like, we should, we should battle these bills um, in all these states. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, those those state legislatures are overwhelmingly Republican, so that's kind of why the, the the votes went the way they did. Um, but, like, just because those bills were passed or, or, or seemingly going to be passed, it doesn't mean, like, we got to throw in the towel, like, oh, damn, like, our kids will never learn about that. Like, no, we, there are clubs, there are there are initiatives and communities, or maybe there are commu there are initiatives and communities that need to be started. Mm -hmm. There are two parent households, one parent household. Like I know plenty of kids, or have heard many stories about kids who um, were raised in single parent households, and yet their parents were right there with them doing their homework, or their parents were constantly teaching them about things. So, just because 
the school system may or may not be teaching a certain thing doesn't mean we don't have the ability to, to, to teach our own children is what I'm saying. So, so I agree with you 100%. Uh, of course, it's I said not we agree. necessary to expect a school system to educate our children completely, but you made the same point that you were not in a, you were an, a full grown tax paying adult when you learned about Juneteenth. So that mean that, not uh, I every- don't think I was actually I was avoiding them taxes. I was sliding by them taxes. But don't say that on camera. I'm just saying I paid them up. I'm paid up now. I'm just saying. Um. So with that being said, I ran out of stamps. You know, back when a, used to mail them in, I couldn't. There's couldn't a large them. generation. There's a lot of us who, unless we did our due diligence and went out of our way to learn, were exposed to mediums that were educating us um, outside of school. We don't have this knowledge, so. It's it's imp- it's still something that needs to be part of curriculum. Absolutely. So that's why I can't. But be until it is, but until I'm- it is, right? Like until it is, then we, like I said, we teach our own but children, we still and we have use our own learning about and we and we you, but 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 now it's out there, right? Yeah. So now Google is available to everybody. Everybody got a public library. I got free internet. Got Google. Go on there. Juneteenth, boom. You're going to get about 10, 15 renders per search, per page for the I, search. I'm just saying it's upsetting. And I, I told, I was listening to another podcast and she broke it down so eloquently. Uh, but essentially she, and then I was listening to a segment eloquently. on the- Eloquently. Eloquently. Mm. Um, and then I was listening was she to- she articulate too? <laughs> I can say that. Um, she was listening to- I was, So she, articulate. I, like I used to think oh that was gosh. such a compliment. And now I'm like, yeah. you shady. Oh, is that a microaggression? <laughs> so I was, and then I was listening to a segment on NPR and they were saying how essentially the Republican Party is recognizing, this is me combining both what I heard on the podcast and NPR. So, you know. This isn't Jessica. This is what she heard. This is what I heard. Don't come for us. So, well, if you're going to come, come for her, but don't come Google, for us. Or just search, search it and see which, which segment- I'll, I'll I'll expand. Anyway, um, they between the two conversations, they are pretty much saying that one. Remember, the ally white white people have recognized that wow. Over the course of history, white people have done some terrible things and they've covered it up with these terms to make it seem like it's a positive thing. You know, um, destroying entire civilizations discovered um like they 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 you know cancel out the negative and rewrite the narrative to let it benefit them and on top of that modern day republicans are recognizing that their the 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 population that they would depend on for the strength of their party they're losing that because People are getting too educated. Um, I believe the pot. This I'm gonna. This is from the podcast. She said, you know, she was um, referencing the L.A. protest after George Floyd died, and she was saying that, you know, a majority. It was like the largest protest. A majority of the people there were white. So if you are of, you know, the the grand old party, good old South, like true to the cause, um, white. And you're looking at all of these people who are supposed to pick up the mantle for you and seeing that, one, they've been overeducated, so now they have opinions that differ from us. We need to do what we can now as the minority to cancel out all of the things that are negatively impacting us. Because it's no secret that a lot of this generation is like, hey, this this just ain't right. Or, you know, things that black people have been saying for years, everyone else is finally slowly starting to hear. So it's, in my opinion, just from what I'm absorbing and I'm still developing my thoughts and my opinions on it, but it's, it's a protective tactic. It's a fear tactic that we need to preserve who we are. I mean, the daughters of the Confederacy did it. They recognized it. They had the foresight. Ooh, did they? Did they ever? They had some for you know what lost cause shady white people. I'm gonna give y'all some credit because you guys have y'all are some shady mo- the truckers, but you all have some foresight where you can see that you need to control the narrative. So the daughters of the Confederacy were like, "Oh no, y'all not gonna put Pappy in these books and make him seem like he was a bad guy. He was fighting the cause. He was fight. Uh, he was fighting Say Pappy. Pappy." 
I feel uh, like those kind of people refer to their grandfathers as pappy. Okay. Um, it just it just came out. That's, I think. Um, no, not pappy. I, I don't. I don't people. I, I, I think uh, you made your point because <laughs> I feel like you about to go in, and I'm gonna have to like have to edit a lot of this out. You don't want but, me to go in. Um, I'm, I'm going I'm, in. I'm gonna go ahead. And I'm gonna go hard. Go ahead. So they control the narrative. Thirty seconds. Because I remember. I see the timer. It's not. Hey, so I forgot. I forgot to start it. So we're like okay, a couple fine. minutes. Okay, fine. Give me two more minutes. Because you know, I spend you, a lot I said of time. Seconds. You can say two minutes. I spend a lot of time, like when all of the monuments coming down was becoming a thing, and this was before I knew about the daughters of the Confederacy and how they, you know, impacted, you know, monuments and making sure that history was controlled a certain way when when reported. Uh, but I was like, you know, y'all, there are some good white people. Like, like I mean. There were some legit, there were abolitionists. I mean, I would have settled for um, Beecher Stowe. Is it Margaret Matt? What's her name? Uh, Beecher Stowe is her last name. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Uh, like, y'all could have put a monument of her up. Like, there were some the imperfect, imperfect white people. But there were some ones who, like, hey, this person deserved, like, I, I don't, I'm not saying Sacagawea. I'm not saying Harriet Tubman. Like, I'm talking, like, back in the 1700s, 1800s, there were some, legit like some white people who actually did good things that were not um you know enslaving people or not colonizing people they were you know just you know maybe they were wealthy um maybe they were paying people like way we, below i'm just saying like why didn't anybody put monuments of them up like are they because well, philadelphia has a bell y'all put up a whole bell but you couldn't find like quasimodo was up there right the quasimodo was in france oh my bad. Sorry. You could have borrowed other countries' good people. <laughs> Look, you could have put a king up. I, I think. I think saying, we all. I think we all know why the the monuments were put up. Yes, like, because they're trying to supremacy. control the narrative, and yeah, now all supremacy. of us went to these schools named after these people, thinking like, oh, you know, I'm getting an education, an education that was controlled by people who wanted to make Peepaw I'm, look good. Peepaw was not a good guy, and and, it, and, and it really just boils down to. We don't want to accept the fact that we come from an ancestry of bad people. But, like, in reality, That's fair. everybody has some, like, I feel like there are very that's few fair. people who don't have a bad person in their history. That's, but, I mean, that's, that's absolutely it. Because if you think about, if you think about, like, a lot of the, uh, the Confederate flag or Confederate monument arguments, people say, oh, well, my, my great, great grandfather fought and, you know, blah, 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 blah. It's not, people don't, like, the more people, more more people I've spoken to, the, and the most of the accounts that I've heard have been like like emotional attachments to the to the Confederacy or or Confederate monuments or the Confederate flag. It hasn't been like a a, 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 a literal breakdown of like why the South seceded. Even mm-hmm. no, it's because of slavery. But anyways, like that is definitely true. A lot of people mm-hmm. just have like that that emotional attachment because they can't they can't it's hard to think of like completely like that people just, just <laughs> your people just you know disowning them uh because of their their cause um you know i think that's just cognitive dissonance and, and a lot of other things at play and but, if you really <clears throat> think about it like the secession from the union that's yeah, that's the breaking apart of yeah. a country yeah, so I it's like you also don't want to think about the fact that you had an ancestor that yeah. was for sure. se- like you are like the thing with people who support the confederacy and still are for the confederate some, flag some people, some people yeah. um, they are so patriotic like they take patriotism so seriously and i'm always like but this is your people was trying to legitimately say because you won't let us have our enslaved people, our, our economy run by enslaved people, we don't want to be part of this country. And, I mean, the North doesn't get much credit from me either because other countries were recognizing that the South was like, okay, they're separating, they're becoming their own country. And the only thing, the only reason why France, Great Britain, didn't stand behind the South anymore was because they had already abolished slavery internationally. But if it wasn't for that, like... Yeah. Those countries don't get much credit from me either. So sure. it's like, yeah, you guys are so patriotic, you know, you know, Mother America flag and, you know, ha- home of the free, brave, all that good stuff, right. Confederate flag. But Peepaw was a rebel saying that. Can we that, stop? Can we, can I just we like saying right. it. Can saying we, that right. we so, don't want to be part of America. So it's like you're lin- like 
You can pause. I'll circle back. Thank you. Goodness, stop talking. We'll be back. So I don't remember what exactly I was saying. Oh, I didn't get to bring us in or nothing. Just Jessica. Just, Sorry. This, this is the, you know, we've, um, <laughs> it's episode we've been, 30 we've, plus we've been trending a certain way here lately. And what it, the way that we've been trending is that this is Jessica vibes. Sometimes featuring, sometimes audience. featuring, sometimes featuring <laughs> my David. My opinionated audience. I don't, I'm not doing that on purpose. And I hate when he says that this is my show. It is. It's it's, not, people it, are, people come for you. No. They, they come, come for, for you. us. No, they, they come for you. Because we have the chemistry. You, it's, it's, it's the, I, it's the I J-Hive. I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you. So stop saying it's me. It is. Jessica's the main attraction. She got all the sayings. All the I t-shirts know. we're going to design are going to be, be her okay. catchphrases. Well, come up with some. You have NAE. No, I can't put that up. No, you can't because African come, kids will come, come for me. And then they're going to come for me. They're going to be like, oh, so you said that and you let your husband put negative African energy on T-shirts. <laughs> and no. I'm going to be like, uh, in, in, in this interaction, you are proving <laughs> negative African energy. Um, I I just think, and I we've gone in so many different directions. I don't really even remember. Yeah, this is like we're, we're so far away from make. Juneteenth. But like, I don't even know where what we're talking about. I'm not. Ex- it, it all boils down to. There's so much history and and I don't expect, you know, between elementary school and 12th grade, you should learn everything about American history and world history. But there are some core fundamental facts that need to be taught to children. And I just think that there were things that we needed before Juneteenth. And it just seems like every time the black population needs something in terms of legislature or law enacted, we don't get that. We get I, something else. And I understand that. But that doesn't mean that these things can't be appreciated. They, they're not mutual. They, like, you, like you have to be able to walk and chew gum at the same time. Like, I'm not saying, oh, we got Juneteenth. That's it. Racism's dead. But like, all of our history has been taught. There is nothing else to learn. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying, like, June and the you like a, a country that we have said on this podcast was founded upon racism and is still racist. systematically racist has declared Juneteenth mm. a federal holiday. Now you may say, Oh, they're just doing that to give them something because we can't, we can't get, we can't get be the quiet. George it's because let me finish because we can't get the George Floyd bill passed because we can't get the, uh, the John Lewis bill passed. Like, okay, I hear that. And we're going to keep, we're going to keep our foot on their necks and we're going to make sure that those things get done. But that doesn't mean Juneteenth becoming a federally, a federal holiday, nationally recognized holiday is not significant. And it is. And there are people who we know, one person in particular who we know who has fought to get that holiday recognized in their city um, and here in Mecklenburg County as well, who I think would take the uh, the uh, the opinion that it is significant and it should be highlighted and it should be celebrated, but that does not mean that that's that's it. That we just stop. We keep going in our pursuit of the things that we need that we want to see accomplished, but we also recognize the victories and the significance of those victories along the way. That's all I'm saying. I just think like I don't want I don't want to be that person who is never can never appreciate anything because they don't have everything well, then all you're that, settling all, for less all at once no i'm not i said you you have to be able to appreciate things that you, you have to be able to appreciate victories that you have in the grand scheme of things like you don't win like you don't win a war after one battle like you like you there are there are there or after one one fight after one exchange like there are, there are constant there are there are, there are multiple battles that need to be won to win a war so like if you if you like if you went one battle you're like oh damn like we still got like this whole other faction of the army to fight like damn like I'm gonna give up because it's not the entire war and like no nah, you keep going but you still won that war or that you still won that battle mm-hmm. that's all I'm saying I'm not talking about settling for that anybody settling I literally said that it, it just because Juneteenth is a federal holiday that doesn't mean that everything is done that like the pursuit of equality and 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 and, and the elimination of systemic racism is over. Just said that, but you still have to appreciate the fact that in a country that we say is systematically racist, a federal holiday celebrating the end, official end of slavery, has been enacted in the law. Like that's 
not something that you should just roll your eyes over or be, just do the do the Nancy clap. Like, nah. I mean, I'm still don't be don't be don't be. I mean, I mean, there, there's a difference between saying, okay, this is great, but we still want more. There are other things that we need that that if if we if enacted better affect our community, right? Voting, policing. I get it. But you don't, I, I just think a lot of the stuff I've seen is teetering on like disrespectful. Okay. And I don't think, and I think that we should be aware of that. And I think that we should be careful of that. I, that's all, I, that's I all I'm saying. I see where you're coming from. That's all but I'm saying. There's and, I'm still some, and I'm somebody who, yes, absolutely still wants to see um, the, the, the bills in, you know, the bills that were, that are, that are trying to be passed, like passed. Mm -hmm. I'm somebody who's all for that. 100 percent um but i'm not so fixated on just those things that i'm not that i can't appreciate other things that are done as well is all i'm saying and i just feel uh, like we should we should do that as well i guess i just see juneteenth as hush money in my opinion where it's like okay we're just going to give you this and say so that you can't say we didn't do anything and honestly like i feel like juneteenth and independence day have like significant differences because yes, Juneteenth is the celebration of when it was told when people were enslaved people in Texas were informed that, Hey, our bad two years late, but you know, Oops. you're, you're free. Oopsie. You, you've been, you, you know, go get your refund on your work. But you know, it's, there's more, there's more to it because it was just the end as slavery in the form of slavery that we knew it. Slavery was just transitioned into sharecropping. Um, it, like there were other means of which black people were oppressed that carries on to this day, which is which has led to the need for police reform because after slavery was ended, that's when police were in were created to essentially terrorize and keep black people in line. Is that so, true? So, huh? Is that true? That is true. Okay. Police is not, they're not, the design of American style policing, it's rooted from, okay, we've got these black people and now they don't know what to do with themselves because they have to be self-sufficient. So, let's keep them in line. So that's part of why police reform needs to be taken care of. You know, you had these same police who were, instead of allowing people who are now considered American citizens to vote, were keeping them from voting and hushing their voice. And now, 156 years later, their voices are still being hushed. So that's why it's like... Yes, Juneteenth is great. This is great for our heritage. And there's a whole side conversation because I saw something on Instagram where someone was saying like other people of the black diaspora don't have don't have the right to celebrate Juneteenth. And it was like, oh, sis, that's a whole nother conversation. I, I, um, I, I don't think that um, on that on that note, I don't think that I don't think that that's true. But I think it is important to recognize that it's probably like it should probably be recognized as like a black American holiday. But that, one could oh, argue that, that it should just be descendants of Texas enslaved black Americans. I mean, if you want to have that argument, that's fine, but it's still black American. I th so when I was looking at the thread, I saw this on IG. Someone was saying like, you know, and this is how you create division within the black diaspora as a whole. But she was essentially saying like, uh, look, you black Africans, you black Latinos, you like, if you're black, but you're not like American black Juneteenth isn't for you, uh, but I mean Cinco de Mayo probably isn't for me. But you know I go down and get some. We get some tacos and yeah, tequila. So I mean, I mean Cinco de There's Ma nothing wrong, but Honestly, I but I know Cinco that Cinco de Mayo is for everyone who is not Mexican. <laughs> like no offense to my Mexican brother, but the way every like the way white people go hard for Cinco de Mayo, and it's like y'all have your holiday. Y'all have Saint Patrick's Christmas Day. Christmas isn't for for agnostics, but. Some agnostics celebrate and they get Christmas. cards. Yeah, um, so I mean, I, there's nothing wrong with there's nothing fundamentally wrong with that statement. There's only something wrong with it if you just want to be triggered by it. Yeah, I mean, I I don't have a. I think the thing with and that's the complexity of being black is and that's a complexity with being any race uh, because the race is the overall umbrella, and then you have your individual separation. So you know, within our umbrella, we're both black, 
but I'm African black. David is black American. I'm, I'm black and you're African. <laughs> He's blackity black. And I'm, Cause I don't. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm African black. But if you see us on the street, Blue black. we're just, we're black people. But what, what, nah. what has happened historically to you nah. affects me. Cause when you look at me, I'm just black. But with white people, white people, like people forget that, you know, there was a time where Irish people were looked down upon in America. Italians were looked down upon in America, um, and, which is crazy to me because it's like y'all literally come from the same continent and you still have ways of which you look down upon. I mean, one that's another. not different than how so, Africans look at this is true, black Americans. But the point I'm trying to make is now all white people fall under the white umbrella. So they all have white privilege, even if, you know, your grandfather, you know, came on Ellis Island in 1933 and wasn't part of segregate like Jim Crow and slavery and all of that, you're benefiting from what other groups of white people did. So you are lumped into that category by default. You, you, you're, you get the negative, but you also get the positive. You get the privilege. Um, so for when you're black, it's like, we're all black. But no, my I'm, black didn't go through. I'm, I'm black. My black didn't go through the yeah. s- slavery per se. Um, you know, there's still colonization that took place in in Ghana. Um, I have, you know, the the compound. Shout out to Ghana. Uh, shout shout. Uh, like the family compound that my on my maternal side is, you know, it was originally owned by my German great grandfather. And when they all returned back to Germany, they left it. They were like, well, we going. So here's your house. And they left it. So my grandmother's mother, that was the house she grew up in. So she's, she's, she's half white. She's in Ghana, as they refer to it, half caste. Um, But so it's like, we had our own issues, just like South Africa had their issues. But because we all fall under the black umbrella, we all get the same black treatment here in America and around the world. Like if you're black and you're in China, you're probably going to get discriminated upon because that's just the view from it. So the Chinese love black America. No, they don't. Maybe it's just the back black basketball players. Yeah. I mean, everybody loves black (laughs) basketball players. Like, I mean, come on. Have you seen Southern college basketball? Like seriously? Um, like they love, they love black athletes. So the point, the point that I'm trying to make is, I get where I get what they're saying. Like, yes, Juneteenth is not is not for us um, overall, but because we are by default put in the same package as black, we it's it's Blackity important black. that we are there to support each other and understand. Like, I can still empathize with slavery. Because I, and I think from the perspective of what members of my family may have been taken and put on ships, what part of my family was disconnected that, you know, maybe I have cousins down the road that I don't know about because of that separation. It's definitely different. You know, what members of my family didn't make the middle passage and, you know, chose the ocean over what unforeseen future. So like we all, our struggles are all real in the black diaspora. So people were, uh, people were like, I see where you're coming from, sis. And other people were like, look, they're already coming for us and not giving us everything we need. The last thing we have to do is, you know, divide ourselves. Like we can't afford to be div- divided and conquered. Well, I think, um, cause I, I've seen, I saw similar uh, oh, okay. co- conversations, not necessarily on, on Instagram, but on Twitter. And it was people saying, you know, today's Juneteenth. So here's my cash app link. <laughs> well, like, but you, but you, person. but you, but you're not, you know what I'm saying? So that, I think that's where it came in line, came in the conversation. Like if you're not black American or descendant of black Americans who would have been, you know, who, who would have been affected by Juneteenth, then you don't need to be dropping cash app links. Yes, you can celebrate, of course. But don't. Everybody can celebrate. I saw white people out in Charlotte with do-rags on. Like, you did? I'm just being funny. I mean, I'm sure there were some out there, there but I I'm mean, just there saying. Is everyone, everyone everybody has that, can celebrate. Every black person has that one white friend yeah. that's like... Like Jamie Kennedy in that that one movie. So, um, like, what's his face? His son. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, everybody can celebrate, but it's like you know, who is it intended for? Specifically, I think is is what's coming to question. So, um, 
No, but yeah, that that was an interesting conversation. One, I mean, I can I can see both sides of it, obviously, but I think I think you're right, absolutely, Jess. It's like just kind of sowing division, and mm-hmm. you know that's that's unfortunate. That's what they want. That's, that's what, what the man that's wants. What, that's what they want us to do. They want us to be <laughs> divided. Um. Yeah. You got anything else? No, I feel like I poured a lot. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I like, poured a lot into that. But that's just because, you know. That was supposed to be like one segment, by the way. Racial turned history turned is just something that I'm very passionate about. Um, and we're, um, at least we, we, I'm going to say we, I presently, but it will be a we, are in the process of reading the, uh, the 1619 Project, which has been in the, uh, in the headlines a lot. And a, a lot of people, unfortunately, conflate it with critical race theory. And it's it's not. Unfortunately, people don't really understand that. Um, mostly people who are railing against <laughs> critical race theory. But uh, it, it is it is something that has been lumped into um, the uh, the a lot of the bills that are banning critical race theory also mentioned the 1619 project specifically. So um, what's cool is that uh, the curriculum portion of it is is, is on the internet. It's for free. Like anybody can go and go go in and, and, and utilize it. And there's also a book coming out in November. There's a podcast. As well. um, there's a podcast dedicated to it as well. And then you can just go on New York. You can go on the web and, and search 1619 Project and then you can read the essays and, and stories and whatnot. So um, I am reading it currently and you've, you'll notice that we've referenced it but we haven't spoken about it because we haven't exactly read it. So we try not to speak about things, especially things like like that's important as important as 1619 and critical race theory. Um, before we have some, 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 some solid ground beneath this in terms of knowledge. So I mean, that's I something I don't mind speaking about things and then retracting. Yeah. My yeah. <laughs> but it's better if you don't have to retract, obviously. So, uh, that's something that we're, we're looking at presently and it's not something that's going to be going away. Uh, so we will give our, our rushed vibes take on it here. Um, you know, in the coming episodes, uh, but it is something that we're, we're educating ourselves on. Uh, before we speak on it because we don't want to one put misinformation out there but also we don't want to make an ass out of ourselves so um, stay tuned stay tuned for the 1619 Mm -hmm. episode of rush vibes and critical race theory of rush vibes and critical race theory what i will say that i can say with definition with with uh conviction is that critical race theory is not being taught in elementary and middle school apparently college it's it's a college level it's like law school yeah it's like advanced like you're stuff. going it, these are for people who are who who have to pay billy, for education billy joel ain't, 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 ain't gonna be learning no critical yeah. race theory and, people's and not helping nobody with their elementary people school there and, that with, and, and, with and their critical school. race theory so homework if you're freaking out thinking your um, nine-year-old is gonna yeah. be taught critical race theory just relax but not, if you're freaking out about it i mean that what does that say about you why is that a big deal yeah. well you? a lot of people hear talking points they hear uh what news anchors or or talk shows that they listen to are the saying about agendas. it but they don't but they don't actually look for themselves like we're doing uh we may not necessarily we may read the 1619 project and as someone who's uh, cons- uh a self-proclaimed history buff um after she reads it and can look at it with context she may not agree with everything in the 1619 as a black african living in america as an african-american woman as an african living in america Who's married to a black American? African American. I was born here. I Whatever. Got, oh, as an African American who has parents who immigrated from as Africa, a Ghanaian American. As a Ghanaian woman. American, I don't know how many takes it's going to take for me to get this. As a as Ghanaian American who's married to a black, to? as a black American, uh, may disagree with some aspects of the 1619. You never know. Um, but we're going to do the work before we mm-hmm. um, decide on it one way or the other. Uh, but I can say, like I said, with with conviction, that you're you're middle school aged or elementary school aged kid is not being taught critical race theory. So you can rest but assured. You should want them to be. You shouldn't well, be, not want them. <laughs> not that's not a lot of stress because AP tests were serious. Yeah. But it shouldn't be something that, like let's run for the hills of Congress and sign these into law and make sure. Yeah. I just don't understand a country that's all about freedom, how you would want to restrict what people learn. Yeah. And it reminds, I can't remember the name of that movie. We watched it maybe two years ago and it was like how they eliminated books from society and i guess people had like hidden it was a a book before it was a movie it was okay but people had like hidden books and and i don't know if the if that's where like america is trying to go to this dystopia where it's like oh eventually we've erased 
portions of history and it's just oh here we're this great country and you're free compared to the rest of the world free in quotes um but it shouldn't be it shouldn't be scary like it like i've said before it's about evening out the playing field from a young age when you're introducing kids to history when you're introducing kids to natives and hawaiians like like asian pacific like don't start with oh we conquered your land or we brought you jesus and jesus i mean jesus depending on <laughs> on who was i'm sorry i don't don't listen to me like even the pl- right. don't make it seem don't prioritize one race over the other like it's always something that i will reference back that american history starts with the pilgrims and how they were fighting for religious freedom american history starts with native americans who were already here american history starts essentially in my opinion around the world like you need to tie in all of you can't call this place a melting pot but not be willing to talk about all of the components and why this is a melting pot because america would just be a native american country with native indians here and everybody like and immigration would be like how it is everywhere else you got a passport then you can come to north america but that's not that's if you start it with the pilgrims got on the ship because they wanted to be able to practice their religious freedom. Yes, the freedom is great. I, I applaud them for getting on a ship and going, but they're not even the first ones to have come here. Right. 30 seconds. So, I mean, I just want us to, like, that's part of education that we need to start. That's how we need to even the playing field. That's how we need to make sure that everyone, black, brown, white, um, Asian, what color do we, they don't have a color, we just say Asian? Anyway, um... That we're all seeing, like we all see each other in the same light. So that's, if that's critical race theory to you, then I mean, I guess I'll be a professor. So I just want to reiterate the thoughts and opinions expressed by Jessica are not indicative of the overall views of us here at Rush Vibes. Y'all just wait before I, like, I'm going to end up being, like, a black multicultural consultant, like, for just random uh, things. This commercial, and, um, it doesn't put black people in the right light. Like, watch, watch, so watch there, my name if and there, credits. If, if there should be any harsh criticism or hate mail see, that is inspired we, see, by this episode, that is inspired by this episode, it should be sent directly to Jessica and Jessica alone. Look, you said, you send me hate mail and you know who's coming after you? This guy. He's always afraid that I'm going to get in some kind of social media fight and then he has to step in and start, you know, swinging. So, yeah, he might be acting tough now. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. My boo will always fight for me. I'm just saying. If you, if, you, if you need someone, if you feel like you don't want to send it to everybody, being just us, send it to Jess. I'll see it. P.O. Box. I'll see it. I'll, I'll get it. Um, you, can send, you, can, you can adjust it to her. So, uh... That's episode 31 30 plus one. of Rush Rod. I tell you, this is so fun. This is... Uh, we have as many episodes as how old I am. Yes, we do. So two more until we get to how old, how old I am. David, and we've uh, gained some subscribers in the last couple of weeks. So hey shout, out, shout out shout out to our new subscribers. We're sitting at 79. Still trying to make that push to 100. So if you're watching and you've been watching for a while, you haven't subscribed for whatever reason, I don't know what reason it would be, but go ahead um, hit that subscribe button so we can make our way up to 100. Um, man, it's just this has been a blast this last year. Uh, we we are 31 episodes, and I remember we launched in like November, I think, of last year, but have been recording since summertime. So it feels like we're probably already at a year since we've been recording podcast episodes, um, but just you know a little under a year since we've we've gone gone live with the live vibes. So we appreciate everybody who's been listening um, for as long as we've we've been out. We love you. We appreciate you. Um, we just ask that you continue to support us and, and, and share our stuff with with some of your friends and family because uh, we're definitely trying to grow the Vibe Tribe. Uh, merch coming soon, by the way. It's coming. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and bring uh, Jay Belk in. Hey, Jay Belk. Uh, I hope you all, for all the fathers out there, I hope you had a great, restful, peaceful, blessed Father's Day. Hope you all celebrated Juneteenth had fun and stayed wore, hydrated. You, wore your best do rags and stay hydrated we will be back next week episodes every wednesday until then have a great weekend we out we love you guys peace stop me now stop me now stop me now
Yeah, I done came can't way too far to stop me now